California just lost the space race. And the winner is SpaceX. After a year of tension and delays, the U.S. military has officially done what California couldn't. It's given SpaceX the green light to launch up to 100 rockets a year from Vandenberg Space Force Base. This moment marks a loss of control for California, but a historic victory for SpaceX. It's not just about more Falcon 9 launches. It's about the long-awaited return of Falcon Heavy to the West Coast. To make it happen, SpaceX is launching a massive overhaul of the legendary SLC-6 pad, once a monument to government failure, transforming it into the beating heart of America's next-generation launch fleet. But as excitement sweeps through the space community, big questions remain. Will this surge in launches actually impact California's environment and nearby communities? And with limited demand for Falcon Heavy, is this massive investment on SLC-6 really worth it? Let's dive into the full story, right here on TechMap. SpaceX has finally achieved its goal, boosting the number of Falcon launches from Vandenberg. The U.S. Department of the Air Force has given the green light to SpaceX's plan to double its Falcon launch cadence from Vandenberg Space Force Base allowing up to 100 missions a year. As part of the expansion, SpaceX will also redevelop Launch Complex 6, also known as SLC-6, to bring the powerful Falcon Heavy back to the West Coast. This move is fueled by national security priorities and the government's growing demand to send heavy satellites into orbit. On October 10th, the Air Force signed the official Record of Decision after completing the final environmental impact statement. The approval covers as many as 95 Falcon 9 launches and five Falcon Heavy missions annually. Meanwhile, the FAA will separately decide on increasing SpaceX's commercial launch limit from California. The surge in missions is largely driven by two big factors. The rapid expansion of SpaceX's Starlink broadband constellation, and classified national security payloads for the U.S. government. The launch expansion will bring major upgrades to the existing infrastructure. With the Air Force's approval, SpaceX can now move forward with redeveloping SLC-6 to handle both Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy missions. This update is necessary since the company's current pad, SLC-4E, isn't equipped to support Falcon Heavy launches. Under the new plan, SLC-6 will undergo a significant transformation. Non-essential structures from its earlier use in the manned orbiting laboratory and space shuttle programs will be removed, making way for a new rocket integration hangar, a vehicle staging area, and two fresh landing pads for returning Falcon boosters. Construction is expected to kick off in late 2025 or early 2026 and take about 18 months, which means SLC-6 could be fully operational around 2027. This timeline lines up perfectly with the Space Force's schedule, as no heavy lift missions from Vandenberg are planned until roughly 2030. Interestingly, SpaceX had originally planned to use this site for Falcon Heavy missions. However, the debut of the powerful rocket faced multiple delays and was ultimately launched from Kennedy Space Center in Florida in 2018 instead. The change in plans was mainly due to technical challenges and the decision to prioritize Florida's pad for the initial flights. During that time, SLC-6 continued to host several of ULA's iconic Delta IV heavy launches. But once the Delta IV family was retired and the company transitioned to the newer Vulcan Centaur rocket, which doesn't rely on SLC-6, ULA decided to walk away from the site. The high costs of maintaining and upgrading the complex for modern rockets also played a major role in that decision. That opened the door for SpaceX to take over, leasing and revamping SLC-6 for future Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy operations. Still looking ahead, SpaceX's Falcon Heavy will have to compete with ULA's Vulcan rocket for the right to carry out military launches from this location. Both vehicles are designed to meet critical national security demands, particularly for heavy lift missions. 
Falcon Heavy delivers greater payload capacity and reusability, which can help lower launch costs compared to ULA's Vulcan, potentially giving SpaceX a strong edge in cost-sensitive missions. This powerful rocket can lift roughly 63,800 kilograms, 140,700 pounds, to low Earth orbit in a fully expendable configuration, about 2.35 times more than Vulcan. Even when reusing its two side boosters, Falcon Heavy can still carry around 57,000 kilograms, 126,000 pounds, maintaining a clear advantage. For geostationary transfer orbit, it's capable of delivering about 26,700 kilograms, 58,900 pounds, when expendable, over four times Vulcan's capacity. However, when the boosters are recovered, Falcon Heavy's payload to GTO becomes lower than Vulcan's. Still, SpaceX's focus on reusability gives Falcon Heavy a major cost advantage, reducing the price per kilogram for heavy payloads on repeat missions. In contrast, Vulcan doesn't offer reusability. It relies on expendable solid boosters and engines, which drives up recurring costs. Conversely, ULA's Vulcan Centaur is built with a focus on reliability, drawing on decades of heritage from the Atlas V and Delta IV programs. Its hydrolox fueled RL-10 upper stage engine provides exceptional efficiency for GTO missions, giving Vulcan an advantage for high-energy orbits and missions that demand precise placement and dependable performance. In summary, Falcon Heavy's superior payload capacity and reusability make it a strong choice for cost-sensitive military operations that require heavy lift capability and quick turnaround. Meanwhile, Vulcan's reputation for reliability and its flexible modular design ensure secure delivery for critical payloads, where mission assurance is paramount. Ultimately, both rockets are expected to play complementary roles, competing based on mission demands, budget constraints, and acceptable risk levels. The U.S. Space Force is also partnering with Rocket Lab and several other companies to advance responsive launch capabilities, focused on quickly deploying smaller payloads to meet evolving space warfare and national security demands. Unlike SpaceX and ULA, which concentrate on heavy lift missions for large, complex satellites, Rocket Lab provides fast and adaptable launch options for smaller spacecraft through its Electron rocket and the upcoming Neutron vehicle. Responsive launch systems give the military the ability to deploy satellites within days or weeks instead of years, allowing for rapid replacement of damaged assets and quick introduction of new technologies. This agility is becoming essential as space grows increasingly contested, with rising threats such as anti-satellite weapons. Rocket Lab's Neutron rocket, capable of lifting between 8,000 and 13,000 kilograms, bridges the gap between small and heavy lift vehicles by handling medium payloads with short turnaround times. Together, these collaborations are building a more diverse and resilient launch ecosystem capable of supporting a wide range of mission types and schedules. When it comes to SpaceX ramping up its launch activity in California, the space community has shared a mix of reactions. Many enthusiasts are thrilled to see SLC-6 finally being repurposed for Falcon Heavy missions. One commenter noted, I hope SLC-6 gets more use by SpaceX than it did for the shuttle, given the costs of construction et al. And just another example of how wasteful the shuttle program was. Don't get me wrong. A lot of lessons learned, and a lot of science done, but oh man what it cost was nuts. Like SLS nuts. Another shared a more personal story. My dad worked on SLC-6 back when they were converting it to shuttle operations. He was impressed with the size of the flame diverters, as well as the size of the snakes that inhabited them. Wonder if they'll be kept for Falcon Heavy. And a third reminisced about growing up nearby. Having grown up in the 80s and 90s in Vandenberg Village, just a few miles from these launches, I'm surprised that people are upset by the night launches. 
All of the times I experienced them, they were truly awe-inspiring events that I still carry with me today. I'm glad to see more space infrastructure coming to Vandenberg and hope that it benefits the local economy in Lompoc as well. At the same time, others have voiced environmental and community concerns about the potential impact of more frequent launches from California. I was visiting family near Vandenberg one weekend when SpaceX launched just after midnight, waking everyone in my family up. The launch shook our house just as much as a fairly strong earthquake. It is deplorable that they'd launch these massive rockets so close to large population centers. They should be building launch pads out in the middle of nowhere. One user quickly replied, it was in the middle of nowhere. Then people moved in and complained of the noise next to the space launch center they moved next to. Another added, so you are the kind of person who moves in next to a drag strip slash racetrack and then complains about all the noise. The California Coastal Commission, a state environmental protection agency, has unanimously rejected SpaceX's proposal to double launches at Vandenberg due to concerns about noise disruptions affecting people, wildlife, and property. Commissioners expressed worry about sonic booms, impacts on marine life and breeding areas, and decreased public access to natural resources. They emphasize that much of SpaceX's launch activity supports commercial purposes, notably expanding its Starlink network, rather than solely government or national security needs. The CCC staff also criticized insufficient data from SpaceX and the military on cumulative environmental effects. However, the Department of the Air Force, overseeing Space Force operations at Vandenberg, a federal facility, has authority that supersedes state permitting requirements and has approved increasing launches up to 100 annually, including allowing Falcon Heavy launches. The Air Force argues the expanded launches serve U.S. national security interests, deploying satellites vital for intelligence and reconnaissance. This federal approval effectively overrides the CCC's opposition, as federal land operations fall outside the usual state regulatory reach. Adding to all the discussions, one user brought up an interesting point about market demand, questioning whether there's really enough need for Falcon Heavy launches on the West Coast to justify such a big infrastructure investment. In fact, SpaceX is making SLC-6 ready for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy because the national security launches come with a lot of financial support. It doesn't matter if there's barely any demand for West Coast Falcon Heavy. If Uncle Sam is willing to pay for it, then why not? So, what do you think? Do you believe these upgrades are worth it, or is SpaceX investing too much for too little demand? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. The Department of the Air Force's approval of SpaceX's plan to launch up to 100 missions per year from Vandenberg marks a major turning point for the spaceport on California's central coast. Just five years ago, Vandenberg saw only one orbital launch. This year, that number has skyrocketed to 51 orbital flights, or 53 if you include two Minuteman missile tests, the highest annual total at Vandenberg since the early 1970s. Vandenberg is primarily used for missions that fly into polar orbits, which travel north to south and eventually pass over nearly every point on Earth. These orbits are especially popular for Earth-observing satellites that monitor the planet's surface and environment. 